Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. That's right. And my name's Mike. Mike's Daily Podcast. My name is Mike, and today we are at FFF episode 2,699. Oh, we're almost there at 2,700. 2,700. That's something that is unencumbered by people. Mike's Daily Podcast. That go, Mike, how many podcasts have you done? Oh, a lot. But thank you for listening to the show. Mike's So today... Daily. I was trying to what's the word? Podcast. Relax and Yeah. I did the thing where I looked at the email and I shouldn't have done that being a weekend and all. Hey, you know what? Today is everybody do you know what? Cuz Mike's going to tell you what day it is. Cuz he's got that privy, he's privy to that fascinating information. It's actually if you're listening to this on the 30th, it's National Wicked Day. I have still not seen the musical. I know that Kristen Chenoweth came from that. And it was just this big, huge thing, phenomenon, 10 years ago. I, at some point, will go see it. But yes, because we are so close to Halloween, it's so scary. And that might have something to do with the podcast picture. And a little bit later on in this podcast, we're going to get to the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud. Here's a little tip for you musicians that like to send me stuff at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. Please send me YouTube links. I know I am not exactly the biggest fan of YouTube. They, they do things like take down your channels for the weirdest reasons, but... I would love it. It's just so much easier. These links to Spotify and Deezer and all these other things doesn't help me. So I can't hear your music. And here's today's podcast picture. And of course, don't send me the song because it clogs up my email. Hey, that just happens to everybody. Your inbox, doesn't it? The podcast picture is of a scary little display, window display in the fine little town of Niles. And Niles is going to have, what do you call it, a... Dia de los Muertos Day Next weekend A big celebration So looking forward to that The late great Basil the Boxer Actually went to that The Last year he was around We took him to that Yeah So It's also National Publicist Day That maybe that's what I need As a publicist Because no one knows about Mike's Daily Podcast They Does not Quite Affect the world Speaking of the world It's World Audio Drama Day. Now, we have a lot of elements of radio theater in this podcast. But when you talk about World Audio Drama Day, it's telling the stories through sound. What's the cliche of the week? What's the cliche of the week? What's the cliche of the week? What's the cliche? Being entertained through audio. This form of entertainment is called audio drama. The most important feature of audio drama is spoken dialogue, music, and sound effects often added to enhance one's listening experience. Throughout the 20s and the 30s, that would be the 20s, the last century. What's the cliche of the week? What's the cliche of the week? know well War of the Worlds Orson Welles broadcast on Halloween night make some noise <laughs> bringing to you live from Podcaster Valley Mont <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast! Uh, audiobooks became especially popular with the invention of cassette tapes and portable cassette players. Cassette tape players. And I'm so sad because the last podcast I brought you, Let's Go Back with Matthews, and I'm able to do those where I'm playing old cassettes of old radio shows. I'm able to show you how I was on the radio 20, 30 years ago. 
because I recorded it onto cassette, but in order to get the cassette audio onto the podcast, I have to use it through this cassette player that's wired to the computer. Well, it broke. It finally gave up the ghost and I've got to find a new one. I'm going to be searching on Amazon. I'll let you know what I find. But yes, I have to get some more because I have so many tapes I need to. The News Bleed section. Matthew's News. So you're probably doing a good thing by listening to this podcast. We do have a bit of audio drama in this podcast. So awesome. Thank you for doing that on World Audio Drama History Day or World World Audio Drama Day. That's fascinating. It is also Speak Up for Service Day. The importance of young people need to be actively involved in community services. Ridiculous random hosts. The Micropedia Insanica. Of course, it's going to be Halloween on the 31st. It's also going to be National Doorbell Day. (laughs) Because a lot of those are going to be ringing. Ringing all over the country, all over the nation, National Doorbell Day. And in tandem with that, National Knock Knock Joke Day. Knock Knock, who's there? Dwayne, Dwayne who? Dwayne the bathtub, I'm drowning. Or the, other, the one I really like is Knock Knock, who's there? Obnoxious cow, obnoxious cow, who? Moo! National Caramel Apple Day, Ugh. but that is going on. Girl Scout Founders Day Also happening Fair and unbalanced So What else Mike You might be saying Mike give me something else interesting Well I've been doing some more Interesting television watching Watching stuff that you probably are not I love me British shows Because I sometimes fancy me a British person And that's about all I can do with the accent But yes I found that show Unforgotten Now It has aired in the US Even though it is a British made show (laughs) (laughs) Alright Let's go News Random Yo The mic tip Masterpiece theater type Masterpiece mystery I think But it is such an interesting show Uh, We're on the third season And the premise is It's basically cold case files They are finding There's a body That's discovered Usually by somebody Digging something up You know Hey we gotta build a uh, Put some pipes down in here And build a overpass Or dig out a, a channel as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valleyton, the last place on earth. And then they find a body and they they give it to this lady in the police force, this, uh, her department. They look into, okay, did this person die by murder or was this suicide? What was it? What killed this person? Natural causes, whatever. And of course, with this show, it's always murder. And they track down the murder. It's usually 30, 30 to 40 years. It's pretty interesting. Back that the person was killed. And so people are much older. And they're, they're it, oh, this show should also be subtitled Lying Liars and They're Lying. Because these people, these characters, all these characters lie like crazy. And you, you're introduced to all these characters surreptitiously. You go around and you meet them and see their lives and oh, everything's fine. And, oh, they're adopting a child. Oh, their son's graduating. Oh, they're, uh, d- you know, starting a new life. They- they've created these whole lives for themselves. Meanwhile, they're somehow affiliated with this body that was found from 40 years ago. And what's interesting about the show, it gets into some topics that are pretty heavy that are a bit on the dark side but affect all of us and we've all known someone that it has affected and it is a comment about the times even though the show I think I think they're still making it but it started in 2018 so anyway uh, Cafe Anyway I find it fascinating outside of Cafe Anyway somewhere in Podcaster Valley 10 the last place on earth Look who's here. Right now. Hi! 
Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? I didn't know it was my time to talk. How about my horse dinner? And the disgruntled fiddle player tell you what? What? I'm sorry y'all got interrupted. Your weekend got interrupted by an obnoxious cow. I mean, email, Mike Matthews. Thank you, disgruntled fiddle player. Yeah, that makes me disgruntled. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, I make the delicious root beer. Has to be my national audio drama there. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yum. Take it right now, can't you? I just did. Ah. Uh, he orders me around so much. Well, how about one other interesting thing before we get to the Mike Matthews New Tunes feud? And I, I, gosh, I only got three. Usually I have five songs to play you, but nobody ever calls up about it. So it's not like I'm going to be like complaining the way I am complaining. Hey, did you know that rent prices have dropped for the first time in six months? Rent in it in the October rent report. This came from Pitch Public Relations. Speaking of publicists, the national median rent price now stands at two thousand dollars. Actually, make that two thousand eleven dollars. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. Oh, okay. Right? Good. Let's see. So the. 15,000 protesters shut down the Bay Bridge. I think this was sent yesterday. We talked a little bit about that. Oh! So I have a friend named Masa. Masa's a bit of a comedian. And Masa said the following to me. He goes, I don't really express my opinion about this whole Gaza thing, but let's just say if you, if somebody came into my mom's house, my mom, he talks about his mom like he can't he's got to open the door for a woman if he doesn't his mom will yell at him next time he sees her because she'll just know it's one of the things he says but he goes if somebody walked into my mom's house and slapped her and then this person says says to my mom oh you can't slap me you can't have any retaliation no no that's not fair you can't he says my mom would say Are you out your mind But he said it much better than me But are you out your mind The way he said it made me laugh so hard Mike scavenger hunt But yeah that's an interesting way of looking at it Are you out your mind You just killed over a thousand people But yes I know But if you get offended that's the way the cookie crumbles no, you <laughs> Probably don't want to get too much into that topic On Mike's daily podcast not really a political podcast. Wine. Well, I like it. The whiny white man wine list. Occasionally I see interesting commentary like this. And as I've told you, I've stopped listening to NPR. MTV News. You hear it first. National Public Radio I'm done with. Because of the way they're just... They're subtly bashing Israel constantly. Mike's absolutely useless review. And then there's this commentary from more of the right side. Even after six days, the New York Times refused to admit that they promoted terrorist propaganda as news. You'll remember they reported, based on Hamas claims, that Israel destroyed the El Ali hospital in Gaza and killed 500 people. They didn't even wait for sunrise to check those claims before running Hamas's story. Video and audio evidence supplied by the IDF added to the obvious conclusion in the first sunrise. An errant missile fired from Gaza landed on the hospital grounds. The Times, however, still won't report that. Instead, they wrote nearly a week later that Hamas had failed to make its case when, in fact, they never offered ev any evidence at all for those claims. That's exactly the problem I have with the podcast and the radio show that is funded by NPR called On the Media. They basically said the equivalent to what the New York Times did, where they're saying... Mike rip someone a new one. They didn't, didn't, didn't even talk about the Israel side of the story and alluded to or insinuated that it was all a ruse that Gaza 
that this was a lie that Gaza had accidentally bombed their hospital grounds. The Times, however, still won't report that. Instead, they wrote nearly a week later that Hamas had failed to make its case when in fact they offered, they never offered any evidence at all for those claims. An editor's note issued a week later but not included in either article admitted to relying too heavily on claims by Hamas without ap- apology or corrective action. The damage is done, and this was written by Ed Morrissey. The paper should change its motto for full accuracy, all the terrorist propaganda fit to print. So, that's just one thing I've seen. I might be way off, but, ugh. And I've stopped listening to NPR, and I feel so much better. All right, let's go listen to some of these shows, songs, I mean, in the segment we call the Mike Matthews New Tunes Feud. Well, a song is kind of like a, a show. It's just a really quick show. Because doesn't it, it's an escape. It takes you somewhere. It... And it's usually a short little bit of drama It's interesting because Country songs And I was in country radio for a long time You can hear some of that In the last podcast I did With Let's Go Back with Matthews And a lot of country songs Have this as their story arc Um, Two people meet And they fall in love And that's really great And they're wonderful And they're happy And it's, it's great And that's one of the greatest things of their life then the next thing is, oh, the, the they're having a baby. Oh, this is one of the greatest things in their life. Oh, they're going to have a little daughter. Oh, this is so great. And that's the second greatest thing in their life. And then the third greatest thing is that seeing that daughter get married. Well, I just want to just um, thank everyone for joining us here on this show. This is great. That's the third thing. And that's like the high points of life. Echoed over and over and over again In just about every country song I played And technically I did not choose these songs They were chosen for me Partially because of the top 40 list of country music Those were the biggest songs And people were requesting them Maybe people will start requesting this song I don't think this is a country song But they wrote the following Hey Mike, our new single Swing Like This was written in the green room of the aviary in Edmonton, Alberta, the same venue where we are having our vinyl release show. And actually, they did that on Friday night. I wrote the lyrics as a note in my phone pack backstage after having a conversation with our steel guitarist. Ah, oh, maybe they are country. Steel guitarists, definitely. If you have a steel guitarist in your band, you're probably a country band. And maybe you're carrying contraband. Partly, I was reflecting that our previous album, Someday Cowboy, oh, cowboys, definitely in country music and country songs, had a lot of love and breakup songs, and I wanted to do more straight up dance songs. We were also talking about how the word swing comes up in a lot of different genres of music, like how New Jack Swing is a subgenre of R&B and Western Swing is a subgenre of country music. The word swing isn't combined to one confined rather to one genre of music on the dance floor to swing simply means to move with an easy flowing but confident rhythm you might be saying mike what is the name of this band well i will tell you it is baby j and that's j spelled j-e-y let's listen to a little bit of their song that is called swing like this so naturally side to side And when you're close to me I don't want to leave Let's dance forever Never say goodbye Swing like this Alright, I can't play much more or I'll get dinged by YouTube But it sounds pretty good So far, I like it Okay That is the band Baby J And Swing Like This Do you like that song? You can call me 510-228-4640. If I gave out that number too fast, I will repeat it again, or you can hit rewind and hear it again and slowly. Okay, here's the next one. Hannah George. Oh my gosh, it's Hannah Georgias. Georges? Hannah Georges. All right. It says here, 
in just a month, uh, under a month, Hannah Georges, oh, she released an album back th- uh, during the summer. Um, let's see. She, okay, it just talks about, I hate when they just talk about, oh, uh, Oh, she's going to tour. Oh, she's got a new album. Oh, she's going to tour. Oh, she's got a new single. Oh, she's got the... Oh, she, who cares? Tell me a bit about her. Well, it says, while Georges has a rich history of collaboration, her new album is her first release where she has taken on the lead producer role. All right, whatever. They, they're not giving me anything. So I'm just going to play you a little bit of Hannah. Georges, this is called Home. <laughs> At home. Oh my god! The bottom of the chart. Pretty good songs that never made it on the radio because people didn't think they were worth. But you know what? They come back up and people start playing them, and it's like, oh, where'd that come from? Ain't life grand. 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 Wow. The last one here is The Umbrellas. Ah, they have a sophomore album. That means it was made by a bunch of sophomores. No, it means it's their second album. It says The Umbrellas' debut album was one of the surprise hits of an otherwise grim 2021. Umbrellas represent the fertile San Francisco Bay Area scene at its most poptastic. Fairweather Friend is bigger in almost every either every way than their self-titled debut featuring sterling songwriting arranging bigger uh, and more nuanced production the umbrellas are for renegade romantics crafting irresistible indie pop hymns okay let's listen then gosh people do not know how to write these things when they send them to me but here's the umbrellas a little bit of their song called three cheers so cheerful and happy the umbrellas did you like that one which one did you like best baby J, hannah georges or the umbrellas maybe we'll just keep it to three songs from now on makes it a little bit easier for me but there you go which one did you like best you can call me at this phone number oh mike at the cafe anyway hotline area code 510-228 Four six four zero. Uh, and with more ways to reach me, it's A Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.